What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today we will take a trip down memory lane because I have two sets here that have a lot in common, but there's a huge difference as well. This is a brand new one released on the 1st of June this year, and this one came out 37 years ago. So let's roll back time a little bit. The year is 1984, I was four years old, and LEGO released the set 6073, The Knight's Castle. Actually, it was the very first LEGO Castle set that had the famous Black Falcons, but at that point they weren't actually called Black Falcons. This name came from the set 6074, which was the Black Falcon's fortress, but I think Black Falcon was the name of the main character here. But fans started to call these guys the Black Falcons and the name stuck. More about this in a few minutes. Yes, this is me a long time ago, but not in a galaxy far, far away. I was playing with my Lego Knights. I don't have a photo of the castle itself, but here's another proof of my childhood obsession with the Black Falcons. This is again me in a cardboard knight outfit made by my mother. So what you see here spread on the table came mostly from my own Lego collection with the same minifigures that you saw in that photo, meaning what I will build today is actually one of my first Lego sets. There were a few parts missing that I had to order from Brickling, but I was quite surprised that I still had most of the parts. Of course, 37 years did not pass without a trace, so there will be a lot of colored pieces and maybe a few damaged ones, but I wanted to leave everything as I found in my LEGO storage. I don't have the original manual or the box anymore, I printed this photo of the manual for fun. Luckily the instructions can be found online, although it is not hosted by LEGO, which is kind of a shame. Now here's the other set that I will build in parallel, the brand new 31120 Medieval Castle. I was very much looking forward to get this set since it seems to be 100% nostalgia, and I thought this is a great possibility to compare the details and the building experience with the castle set of my childhood. As you see on the box, this is a 3-in-1 set, that means there are actually 3 different builds included that makes the whole experience even better. On the back, there are more details about different builds and their features. All seem to be very exciting, so let's start building. I'm sure it is not big news for most of you, but building instructions were very different 37 years ago. As you see, the parts to be used in a step are not indicated at all, and they are not highlighted on the assembly image either. This is not a problem at the beginning, but it's quite a challenge later on with all these small details here and there. It's also interesting to see that the pieces of the base are not connected instantly, but they are hanging around freely on the table until later steps, so you need to pay attention constantly to the arrangement. The viewpoint does not change at all, so whether you see the parts to be added properly or not is pure gambling. There are some hints at places that are absolutely not visible, but it happens rarely. I know the good old days were much better and we all had fun with these instructions as well, but I'm sure it would be a challenge for kids nowadays. The build itself is pretty quick, I managed to finish the castle in like 30 minutes. As I mentioned, it is not in the best shape, now let's see the other one. There are 9 numbered bags in the box, a loose plate and the building instructions. We get two manuals, one for the main build and the other one for the two alternate builds. There's no any extra information about the set in the manual, only the phases of the build. Let's get started. Oh boy, I can't stress enough how different the building experience is compared to the other set. The instructions are progressing in baby steps, with all the necessary parts listed and with extra details at every place that could cause the smallest challenge. It's also interesting to see that there are no parts added that we may lose, for example, this plate is added in this step without a connection, but it gets fixed to the rest of the assembly right after that in the next step. This is the end of bag 1. I really like the high variety of colors, the small details like the tree and the mushrooms on one side, or the mossy corner with the hanging roots on the other side. And we already see some moving elements like these hinged walls or the drawbridge. Here's a little room with some nice colors on the wall and a cool window. Any guesses what is the purpose? This very non-medieval white roll might give you a hint. Fortunately, the rocks outside are green and not some other color. I definitely miss the hole in the ground for an added realism. The highlight of every LEGO set for me, the Technic section. As you see, this will become the mechanism to control the drawbridge. It can be controlled by this wheel on the outside, and a few steps later, after covering the front section, we get a ratchet as well that will keep the drawbridge in place. Very cool. Some simple but effective snot building to add two pretty accurate portholes for the towers, the archers will be happy. By the end of back 3, the central section of the castle is finished. The two towers are definitely not the most interesting sections to build with lots of repetition, 
but altogether there are many colorful details added with the blue roof, the red and white banners, and the brown and yellow walls. This part of the build will have the blacksmith shop, and it already has many details inside. There's a treasure chest with some gold and some gems. Apparently the blacksmith is played well in this castle. Here is the fireplace, and he also has a cool automated hammer that is driven by this hybrid Technic system mechanism. We have more details added by the end of back 4, both on the outside and inside as well. Here's a full armor, some stairs built over the treasure chest and a tiny brick built mouse with a piece of cheese. Back 5 starts with the rooster and hens, who happen to be scratching the ground right below the target of this archery range. I guess a missed shot might still end up with a good dinner. There's a throne room constructed above the blacksmith shop with some nice details like the throne itself. There are also other interesting things inside, like this candle which I've never seen before, or the fireplace that will have a proper chimney built on the outside. And here we are at the end of Back 5, the chimney is finished, and the black falcons have a black weather vane as well. Now we can also add this cool brick built wheel for the water mill that uses these rounded windows built sideways. As you see the mill drives the hammer for the blacksmith, and I love the small details like these transparent cheese slopes for the splashing water. This is the other side of the castle, and we have a lot of things going on. Here's a nice market stand with some fresh fruits and bread. If you ever had doubts whether the Black Falcons are the good or the bad guys, I think now it's an easy decision, since they placed a prison cell right next to the food stall, where this poor guy apparently starved to death with his empty cup. Even worse, apparently the guy did not have friends to help him escape from the jail, despite the secret access to the cell from the outside. We also get a small separate well with a frog, and that's the end of back 6. There will be also a tower here, and it has some nice snot walls with the yellow and brown pattern we saw at other places. Time to attach all three parts of the castle, we will take a closer look at it in a minute. There's only one item left to build, the mighty dragon. Well, maybe one more like this here. But it's a very very cool dragon. It has very innovative part usage everywhere and neat building techniques used. Tons of joints for a good articulation and playability. It can easily stand, lay down, fly, offer so much fun. So here are our two castles side by side. I know 6073 is not the perfect match for the new one. 6074 could have been a better choice, but that was not significantly bigger either. First about the similarities. Well, both of them are castles, obviously and they can be opened in a similar way to provide access to the interior. Both of them have a jail inside, although it is empty in the older one, but we can always throw in someone. The drawbridge is also functional in both buildings. The mechanism is different and the older one has a rope versus the chain of the newer one, but they are equally playable. About the size difference, the new castle has more than 3 times more parts, so that's not a surprise exactly, with that amount I actually expected a bigger building. But the new set has tons of small pieces for the details, and those details were great and add a lot of playing opportunities as well. We get many brick built animals, the crow in the tower, the poultry outside, the mouse indoors, I think only the frog is a single piece animal. I also really love the color variety of the new one, the yellow and brown parts and the plants here and there really make a difference. The segments of the new castle can be also detached so they can be played independently, but this also makes it challenging to pick it up as these clips don't hold the building together very well. From a playability perspective, I really like that the new one has more space on the wall walks. The old ones were pretty narrow, so the soldiers can only really be placed facing outwards. The towers and the other rooms also became more spacious, and they are pretty well accessible. Well, except of the toilet. That's a challenge to reach, especially if you are in a rush. Talking about the figures, I really like the new interpretation of the Black Falcons, they look great next to the old ones. Interestingly, they are not mentioned on the product page as Black Falcons, despite the fact that in the medieval blacksmith set's description, LEGO already called them this way. What I could criticize in the new set is actually the small amount of minifigures and the lack of horses. I mean, in 1984 we got 6 soldiers and 2 horses in a much much smaller set. In the new one there are only two soldiers and a guy who's probably the blacksmith, and that's all. I think such set would definitely deserve more soldiers, maybe a commander or king since we have a nice throne room, and at least a horse or two. And maybe a princess as well since we have a dragon, 
I'm sure it won't come to kidnap the mouse or the rooster. So, apart from the obvious difference of the time period and the much much narrower selection of LEGO pieces in the 80s, how fair it is to compare these two sets. According to Brickset, 6073 had a price of $27 in 1984. 31120 has a retail price of $99. But meanwhile, 37 years passed, so that $27 would be actually $69.40 in today's money. So, this means that this set has roughly two-thirds of the price of this one, but this one actually has more than three times more pieces than this one. As an extra, the new creator set also has two official alternate models with instructions. The old one also had an alternate model, idea in the manual, but no instructions. I would say that this Creator 3-in-1 castle has an excellent build and play value for the price. It is colorful, has tons of playable details, and the extra models make the fun last even longer. If you add the nostalgia factor with the Black Falcons, I can highly recommend it to kids and to adults as well who played with the ancestors in their childhood. I really wish it came with more minifigures, but this and the other versions might encourage you to actually build more than one of the set. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my LEGO reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time. Bye bye.